How could, they, how could things get any better? There we go. <laughs> so, yeah. You can't better perfection. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. Although, what is it, mate? What my <laughs> friends keep saying about getting very spiritual at the minute. And he keeps saying that God broke perfection in order to create humans. Oh, right. Which okay. I think is, is beautiful. It's a good, as, yeah, it's a good, it's, a, it, it's profound. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a smart guy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chatter. Today, I'm here with Suze Kempner. Suze, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure. So, Cheers. I first found you because of your Nadine Dorries parodies. Okay, yes. So, where did they start? Like, what was there like a particular interview that gave you like a moment of inspiration? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I mean, I think um, Nadine Dorries is um, quite a... She's such a huge character and I've always done, like when I, I'm not, I wouldn't really count myself as an impressionist, but, but when I do do impressions, it's always of big characters. So I do Liza Minnelli and stuff like that. Uh, and I'd seen her a few times pop up and, and pipe up, but this was, uh, it was early February. She did an interview with um, Charlie State on Breakfast TV and it went viral almost immediately this because she was ridiculous in it as charlie state was going because no one had seen boris johnson they they went well have you spoken to him and she was going oh, why are you even asking and it, she just came across <laughs> as ridiculous such a so petulant and and so unnecessary that she there was no reason for her to be cagey she could say yes or no she was a cabinet cabinet minister she could say yes i have spoken to him no i won't divulge what the conversation was but she was like why are you asking that's such a weird question and i went right I've got this wig that I'd already bought because she was being like, she was, she was piping up on stuff a lot. She'd already at this point stood up in the commons and said, um, I'm going to look into cancelling the license fee. And then there was just tons of MPs on all sides going, why the hell are you going to do that? That's a crazy idea. Look how, this is how many jobs uh, in the North, the BBC cover that they would lose. And she'd, she'd go, well, I have to look at my findings. <laughs> And so I bought a wig thinking she'll, she'll pop up again. And she did like two days after I bought it. I put, the, <laughs> put the wig on and um, played both her and Charlie State, edited it together. It all took about four hours <laughs> and posted it. Think, I, I, and it wasn't that I thought this is going to do massive numbers, but I knew it was like the interview had just happened. And I went, ah, people like this. Mm. But it went berserk. So. Mm. Then she couldn't shut up. So <laughs> did plenty more uh, videos of Nadine over the last, uh, it's nearly four months now that <laughs> she's been my main, shall we say target? She, she's definitely taken it as an attack. I've never tagged her in a tweet ever. And she has blocked me. <laughs> she blocked you? Yeah, yeah. I only noticed about uh, probably a month ago. I went, oh, wow, she's blocked me. And like, I've never for? tweeted at her. It, well, it, it, she obviously, it was like, tell me you've seen the videos without telling me you've seen the videos. Yeah. yeah. But, but like, what is blocking you going to do? Hmm. Like, because if they go yeah. viral, like everyone's going to put, she's going to see it somehow. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, just not follow you if you don't want to see like your personal post about it. I say, it's not that I've got, um, you know, obviously as artists, we're all prone to main character syndrome, but it's not that I think I feel her every waking moment, but I do have this idea that she's gone to someone and said, right, what can we do legally? And they've got absolutely nothing. They're just stupid Twitter video. She's like, well, I'll block her. <laughs> 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 well, I mean... To be honest, as soon as that would happen, like if I was doing parodies of anyone, mm. like say, I don't know, we were, I was joking about song on this show mm -hmm. and then they decided to block me because of the jokes I was right. making, I would be like, oh, all right, time to double down. Well, yeah, it, uh, it, it hasn't discouraged me. We'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, how would it? Like, yeah. But is she in love with Boris? Oh, like, did, real question. Like, is she in love with him? I, like, at the beginning of this, I'd go, no, people have just found a few clips and obviously, you know, and she, she operates on a different plane to people who haven't worked in a Tory cabinet. Do you know what I mean? So I would have gone, no, no. But then I saw a clip of her because he ran for leader when Theresa made it in 2016 mm -hmm. and dropped out. Mm -hmm. And there's footage of him that someone's posted with romantic music underneath. 
where he's going, oh, I have no choice but to um, resign from my campaign and actually decides to drop out of the leadership race. And she is there crying. She's at the front row crying, clapping, looking around like, oh, this wonderful man. And she, but literally she keeps wiping her eyes. She's so choked up by this. And I, and then I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in love with him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because the one, the one that I convinced me was when, like, he's he's all, he's at the dispatch box mm. in the Commons, and then she's just like looking there, like, like absolutely, like falling. Yeah, over, are you like, for it? Word. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've seen other, um, you know, moments on the benches where she has gazed at him like that, uh, and yeah, I think, I think uh, he's the subject of a lot of her beautiful novels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. I don't think I'm straying that far through. A lot of people say, oh, Nadine Doris is impossible to parody. I heard someone say it on a podcast recently. Nadine Doris, oh, she's impossible to parody. And I went, no, she's not. But you barely have to do anything. <laughs> I, I tend, to politics the, uh, tend to parody the politics around her mm. rather than do anything particularly outlandish with her because she does it all herself. I mean, have you had anyone think that it was, like, real? Yeah, I have, which I think is mad. <laughs> I'm really not trying to. Cause I know that um, you know the the best satire should feel like truth. Mm. Um, I've heard that said, but I am never trying to trick anyone. I think it would be like I've done Michael Fabricant videos, <laughs> and I think if anyone went, oh, I know that's a comedian and a, and it's a woman in a wig, I'd go. Good, good, you do. <laughs> but I, yeah, a few people have said like, "You are a disgrace. What you are doing to this country is so bad." And initially, I go, "What me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a citizen." Um, but no, they thought I was a real thing, and it's. I think that I think that says something about them. It shows they haven't paid enough attention because, like, she's got thirty years on me for a start. And uh, also, like, I don't even put a wig cap on. You can see my very dark hair poking out <laughs> from the wig. And it's green on a green screen. And I usually do them in a hurry because I'm like, get it out, get it out, get it out. Um, so the keying in my green screen is bad. You can see, like, bad shadows and st stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, I have had people go, well, how was I supposed to know this is a parody? They are all so ridiculous at the moment. I'm like, well, it's a real bad wig. The wig was $5.99. <laughs> Not high budget production. No, 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 no. Because uh -huh. I know, I know, I've I've seen and like um, Rosie Holt, who I had in the show yeah. actually uh, mm -hmm. last year at one point. Uh, I, I see her and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Like her posting, people like reacting to like her her like MP defense yeah. videos. Like like they're real things. And they're like you can't yeah. actually think this is real. I, I mean, I can see it more with Rosie because uh, she doesn't have a bad wig on. <laughs> Like, she hasn't got a mad wig and a bad green screen. Um, so, but yeah, but I always think like when it's someone on Twitter going to Rosie, this cannot be real. And she's there going, yeah, no, can it not be real? <laughs> um, I always think, like, have you, is this the first time we've come across these videos? There's so many. Yeah. Then they, go, they come out all the time and they always go viral. Like, how is this the first, is, like, first day in the big city? <laughs> I, mean, I think it's just Twitter. I, mm. I don't know. Twitter seems to like, because I think that the only way I'm able to separate and, and like try and like not despair about yeah. the future of humanity when yeah. you read Twitter oh, like, yeah, is terrible. that I have to separate people from like, there's like Twitter person mm. and then there's like what they're like in real life. It's like, yeah. I don't think of an example. Like, like Otto English, who I love. Oh, right? yeah. Love him. Some of his tweets, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> that's, not, like that's not a good take. Yeah. But in yeah, person, yeah. I fucking love him, loved his book. Right. Um, same with Owen Jones. Love his book. Right. He's blocked me on Twitter. I don't know why. Right. I've never interacted with him. <laughs> I think Owen Jones, because I know Owen and I really like him. Um, I, I think I actually, he's really brilliant. And I think he gets a real unnecessary amount of abuse. And I think there's an element of self-protection because mm. I can see it myself. He has 20 times my following. Yeah. And there are times where I'm going, right, I'm preemptively blocking that person who's liked someone having a go at me, that person, that person. Because I just go, no, and then they're done. And then I won't have to deal with them in three weeks mm. when they're piping up with something, even if they maybe weren't going to. Mm. And I, I can, so I can see it. I can totally see it from Owen's point of view. Um, 
I'm curious uh, as to like yeah. how you came across me. Like, to right? Me. Do you yeah, know what I mean? and like, also like- <laughs> the other thing is there are block lists. So I was on a block list. Oh. With, so it's just, you can click a button. I, I, I've never done it and I, or, or looked into it, but I know it can be done because I was blocked by like a ton of um, trans women and trans activists. And like, I'm like, guys, I, I promise it's one of my um, m- my main things that I'm really angry about. <laughs> it's like, I'm really, really pro trans rights. But it turned out I was accidentally on some block list uh, and I've gradually been taken off more <laughs> By more and more, like, oh, it's Suze. No, she's okay. So yeah, I think people can accidentally end up on block lists and things mm. like that. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that does actually make sense. But yeah. again, I'm curious how I end up on a block list. I mean, yeah, I yeah, it is weird. Much. Oh, right. It's yeah, mostly just like reposting <laughs> things that I'm doing, like podcasts or whatnot. Like sometimes yeah. I'll see something and type like, "Oh, what the fuck of take is that?" And then half the <laughs> yeah. time I have to stop myself. It's like it's not worth it. It's not. Worth there are so many times where I go, oh, "I mean, I could stop myself," and then I look at the tweets. I go, "There's not one." thing here that I would take back <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I guess sometimes I'm just like it's not quite worth the trouble mm. oh it never is <laughs> Cause yeah because then I'm just I'm always terrified of like not terrified but people go trawling through some mm. like thing and you love like you used the wrong word one time and then it's yeah like, um, you're a bad person for life I, th- I think that's a real natural fear to have now and I think it's been instilled by the right to be mm. honest, who are constantly like, they're out to cancel you, they're out to cancel you. It's only ever the right that have tried to, quote, quote marks, cancel me. There's a, like a rumour really? going around. Yeah, there's a rumour going around it among like right-wing transphobic Twitter. They, the two things, the, the Venn diagram does tend to be a circle. Um, <laughs> that where uh, they said, well, there are DMs floating around where Suze was transphobic. And I haven't seen them, but I know that they're floating around. And I, this pipe popped up once and I just was, I, that was easy block block that person um knowing that it wasn't true and then it came up again with someone else about a week later and i went well this is obviously something i've done and then i thought no it isn't i wasn't even dming trans uh, you know i wasn't even saying transphobic things when that was a like a well-trodden yeah. Yeah, comedy like a path that yeah. people would do all the time like i was like no that just hasn't happened and uh Someone, uh, I think it was Katie Montgomery, retweet, like quote tweeted someone who said it again. They said, either post these or shut the fuck up because you've either got these examples of Sue's being a transphobe or you haven't. And then it hasn't come up again. So I think it was just, a, it was apparently weird. it was on Reddit. Yeah. So, but like, what? So there was, there was some right wing dude. Yeah. Same, who was like, yeah. who was like, tra- who was so weird, right? There was some right wing <laughs> dude. Trying to cancel you for being transphobic. Yeah, which is their favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was going to say. It's not, that's yeah. not like the, the, that's not what you would expect. Yeah, yeah. But it's still horrible when that, when it happens. Mm. You go, oh, I, there are, you know, there are, it makes you paranoid. You go, well, what, what do people know? What have they yeah. taken that I've said and turned into that? And it, it's nothing. It was actually nothing. I have no need to make stuff up about like people like, Darren Grimes or Andrew Neal. I don't they just, need to they just speak. And they yeah, like, I don't serious. need to invent anything. It's like when people um, were posting. Uh, there's a like a meme of Trump. They're like, "This is Trump in the '90s," and he and the the quote is him going, "Oh, you can tell Fox News viewers anything. That's how you get votes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd never said it, and Fox News hadn't moved in that direction till Bush administration, the mm. second Bush administration. Um, and so whenever that would get posted, I'd. I feel like I was such a annoying push glasses up nose pedant going, uh, you really shouldn't have posted that because it's just misinformation and we hate it when it's from the other side. But people go, well, it's the sort of thing they would say. <laughs> like, That's not enough. We don't need to make anything up. <laughs> I mean, like, to be honest, half of the, the like, people saying things, like, oh, this person's, like, transphobic, or this person's mm. racist, or this mm-hmm. person's sexist. I really wish we could all just give each other a little more of the benefit of the doubt Hmm. and and also stop like stop writing someone off for like one thing that they said that you vaguely think might be slightly like yeah if it's if it's trying to prove a um if all you're trying to do is prove a point and you found i don't i can't even think of an example but if you if you find that someone at one point was caught on video going haha that's a bit gay and and that was 15 years ago. Um, and you're some homophobe and you're going, ha ha, see? Like, well, you're just doing this to prove a point. Um, you don't actually care about that. If you don't actually care about it, then why are you 
yeah. bothering about it. Yeah, because I also feel that this is probably something to do just like Twitter, I don't think it's a good representation no. of the overall population. No. But like, I don't know. Maybe I'm naive, but <laughs> I tend to feel that like 90, 95 plus percent of people these days aren't racist, homophobic. No, racist. Pretty They're decent. all just like, yeah, everyone's like equal. We're all people. Like, mm. <laughs> you know? Most people, well, it's, um, it is amazing uh, when on the transphobia, call it the transphobia issues. Like, let's, let's stop calling it an issue, huh? Um, the issues with the transphobia. Uh, you get people who say, well, most of the population is transphobic. And there's poll after poll that shows that isn't the case. You never know it from Twitter. Mm. <laughs> but then people seem to like, to, yeah, it's like they parody what someone's argument was to like portray them in a certain way. Like it happens on both sides. Like like the, the right will like parody some like crazy left wing mm. idea. It'll be like, well, everyone just believes that the government should give you a home and a phone and everything that you ever need and you should do no work. That's mm. just what the left believes. And you go, is it though? Do they think that? No, like, like <laughs> I've never tried to, well, I have tried to get free stuff, but. <laughs> well, no, but, but like, that was from, free that was from tweeting at All Saints. I went, <laughs> I, sh- I did a shit post going, give me free dress. Come on, I love your stuff. And they were like, all right, if this gets a thousand retweets, you can. And it worked. And there were people who were annoyed on the left. So, <laughs> what? So, I guess people don't like people getting free stuff after what? all. What were they annoyed so they for? Are, they were like, why are you giving her free stuff? She's, still, she's already got a following. What? Uh, but my, my point being that lots of people on the left who actually follow me were like, well, that's not fair. <laughs> so we're not all just trying to get. We're not all it's thinking everyone dress. gets stuff for free. I think it was um, Elon Musk. He did. It, he posted a meme. <laughs> the genius that is. He posted a meme and it was Karl Marx. It's the only thing he's ever done that made me laugh. And um, it was Karl Marx. And next to it, as a quote, was uh, he'd written "Give" as "Gib." Give me that for free. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's really funny. As, as a left, as a as a. T- t- terrible red menace leftist myself um i find that i find that meme hilarious because it's so ridiculous but he was literally posting it because he was like that's what they're like <laughs> i mean i i feel like people read into his tweets like too much because you i feel i feel like he's just on there he's just like i have enough money i'll just troll like you know I he's he in the really, position i don't know what just- elon musk i think what elon musk would really i think it's really telling that he went on snl and was terrible mm. on it, oh, but he was awful. trying so hard. I think his ideal is that everyone really likes him and thinks he's great, mm. and it's not going to happen because mm. he's actually kind of tedious mm. and not funny. So he, so he goes, "Well, I'll just get richer and richer, then you'll find me funny." And then he's <laughs> like, "I'll buy Twitter," and it looks like that's going to fall through. <laughs> oh no, not actually. This morning, oh, really? uh, this morning there is back on. Oh, it's, it's like, back on. It's, it's back like, on. It's like fucking it's like it's like Ross and Rachel, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> They're like, no, we were on a break from the bots. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, where you said you have to prove that less... Oh, I just burped. You have to prove a less than 5% of uh, Twitter is bots. Mm. Like, but mate- did you see how they tried to... Pr- how, how, did you see how Twitter tried to prove it? Oh, no. They sampled 100 accounts, <laughs> right? And this is, this, is what, this is how it all came out, because he was just like, hang on. He looked at like the cream and was like, 100 accounts, really? Yeah. And then he went on Twitter and was like, oh, just sample 100 accounts. And then Twitter got pissed. Because they were like, well, you know, you're breaking your not your NDA by like showing or like working out for these things, and then yeah, and then it like Twitter were like, oh, we're not going to do it, and he was like, okay, because he gets a billion dollars if they if the deal falls. Through. I say yes, yes. So yes. he's just like, I'd say he's pushing it as far as he can go. Yeah. <laughs> but like, do you think do you think there is like five percent of bots on Twitter? Or you think it's I more? Have, I have no idea to be honest, but I think it's funny. Do you get a lot of bot comments. Yeah, yeah. And, and they get more and more obvious. But I think that you also get the danger is um, writing anything off as a bot. Mm. Like writing out. And it's like, no, no, some people are horrible. <laughs> also, the bots, I think people um, have a slight misunderstanding of bots that it's a robot. Mm. It's like, no, there's real people, but they're paid to run these bot accounts. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're, they're just like copying and pasting the comments. That's it. Yeah. And you can tell because uh, they'll say, you know, they go, lefty is triggered about something I've said about Johnson or whatever. And then you go on their account, scroll down and they're posting MAGA and uh, you go, oh, you are just a bot who hired to post mm. MAGA and the British MAGA. MAGA. <laughs> MAGA. Yeah. What is the British version British of MAGA? MAGA. Um, oh, do for life. I don't know. Get Brexit done. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. 
kind They're of really good on. slogans, man. <laughs> it, like, the res- is the done res- and it's doing us. Yeah. yeah. It's a guy, his name I cannot remember right now, but he was like pretty big, um, like political commentator in America. Mm-hmm. And he lost like tens of thousands of followers and I had like a whole bunch of sponsorship right. deals. Because he suggested that he thought Trump was like a master persuader. And he was like, look, see all the stupidness that you think? It's not as stupid as you think. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the really simplistic language, like the really brief, like caption phrases that he right. used, like the, the nicknames. Like, look, really ignoring the fact that this is really powerful because you can't like just pretend that everyone's an idiot. There's like something about the way he's doing it. And it, I think it was definitely echoed. Like, get Brexit done. Yeah, no, it, it works. fucking worked, didn't it's it? All, no, uh, uh, Take both, back control. Both um, campaigns have Bannon all over him. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I do. I like, I genuinely do think Trump is a stone cold dum dum, but he was, <laughs> but he was, uh, useful at that particular time. I yeah. mean, it's, we should never forget that he, he absolutely tanked that election <laughs> against, um, a really play it safe campaign from Biden. Although not, weirdly, it feels, it, it's, that's easy for, to forget as well. He reached left and brought in this, it, it, and they, then abandoned all the things. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It's really. It's so disappointing. And I, you know, I'm, I have no dog in that fight, yeah. but I do I mean, a bit because well, it all. To be honest, back like here. the DNC deserved to like. They 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 they, 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 de- they deserved to lose. They deserved it, to yeah. lose in 2016 when they fucked Bernie, and they deserved yeah. to lose again when they fucked Bernie. Yeah, <laughs> and and I'm sort of I've I've gone um, I'm more extreme on this as as but in 2016. I was very aware of what a flawed campaign Hillary had run uh, and had been paid to run, I guess. Um, I, and I was very aware of how obviously she was a better candidate. Like, so obviously she was a better candidate. So it's, the, it's a, one of two things. Um, I now get read. I've, I find it really hard when people start going, oh, all the Bernie bros. Oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure they're quite obnoxious, but there are people in the center who are really obnoxious too. Yes. <laughs> it's almost like you can be obnoxious of any persuasion. Yeah, yeah. Get, fancy they that. They called Elizabeth Warren a snake. Well, um, Elizabeth Warren supporters, I saw them going, I want Bernie supporters to die in a fire. And, and that apparently is different. Like, <laughs> Totally, totally That's different. That's different. They're right, because <laughs> I hate Bernie yeah. supporters. Like, I really like Bernie Sanders. I think he's really brilliant. I don't know how he puts up with it. I don't think I could ever be a politician. If I was in the dispatch box and I had to sit opposite Boris Johnson, I'd, I'd go full Formbury. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd be useless. <laughs> I mean, like, so, because my, um, my mom was like, asked me forever. She's like, so you're going to, like, you should go into politics. And loads of people mm. tell me this. Like, God. Oh, that's like, a terrible I'm not idea. Capable for both of, us. of sitting there <laughs> qu- quietly and silently, like and you know, courteously. Yeah, like, I, w- I would be thrown out of the House of Commons in a minute. Yeah, I'd just be like, like he would stand there, and be like you lying cunt. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just call him a cunt. It would be. Um, I was, I, my friend Will Hodgson, uh, they're a brilliant comedian. They said that. Um, they said Starmer should just go, should just call him a cunt and get thrown out. It would be a wonderful turning point for his leadership of Labour. I was like, I would like that. <laughs> it, it would sway me back to Labour. <laughs> it's like when Gordon Brown, do you remember in 2010, the election campaign, he got caught on a hot mic saying, God, oh, why did you make me talk to that bigoted woman? That kind of made me go, because at that point I was still voting Lib Dem. That's how uh, cool. that's how much that party's cool. changed. I went, but I, I, I went. Oh, I could, I could vote for this guy. <laughs> it's a bit of honesty. It's like it's a bit of humanity. Yeah, and that's that, what people I, loved about fucking Jeremy like Corbyn me. as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, like they. I mean, I, I'm, I won't say too much about Jeremy Corbyn because uh, I had a horrible five years <laughs> on the on the old socials. Lost friends over it. Um, really? But, about what? Yeah. Just about Jeremy Corbyn. No, but, but like, I won't, what was, you know what, what I, was your opinion I, that was, I, or there? I won't go. Like I won't go too much into it on a podcast because I know what people are like. So, and the same, I won't. Like, this is this is how bad it got. Uh, okay, it got so then, it got I mean, to the point where I was self harming over um, who I supported politically, and the, and there are people, and I admitted this on Twitter and had people going, "Well, they are. That tells you everything." Like, wow, you compassionless fucks. Um, anyway, uh, you pro or. Pro. Pro Corbyn. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right? And people were like you're losing friends. Because- yeah, I did lose friends what because of it. Fuck? Not close friends, obviously. No, but still. I mean, um, I got called some names that do not make any sense. One of which is anti-Semite, which really makes no sense if you know anything about me. Um, but and as I said, I'm not going to get too deep into it. Mm. The um, the how relaxing it's been having him out of leadership for two years kind of makes me sad because wow. it's all all of a sudden I went I was able to go. Oh, they can't make this my problem anymore. Not that not, I was like, the weight of Corbyn's leadership was on my shoulders. I don't think that. But I went, well, no one can come after me for me. Happen anymore. They still do, though. They're like, I still, people, still see people go, I will never forgive Jeremy Corbyn for what he did. And it's Maybe like, what did. you're talking about, are you talking about Laban losing Hartley, poor, you know? <laughs> Lord Laban. <laughs> Guys, I don't think this is on him, but if you can make everything to do with him, I guess, then you never have to feel guilty. I feel guilty all the time over everything in politics, so <laughs> it must be nice to never feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, well, I've asked, ask our Prime Minister. Mm. <laughs> oh, his <laughs> apology. A- I don't know when this goes out, but his apology It'll yesterday. It'll be on Tuesday, so we've got okay. five, six days. Okay. Five, it's five days, so hopefully it's so still le- relevant. Less than a week ago, he gave a wonderful apology in the Commons, which was basically like, well... You know, I feel sorry for the cleaners. I feel sorry for the staff. But most of all, I feel sorry for me, Boris Johnson. <laughs> it was an amazing apology. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? What is going on with that fuck? Because, like, what is only, going on? It's like, because people, like, the, this, people keep, um, I don't know, but the Tories seem to do, be doing this amazing job, right, of making people focus on this idea that it was like, just a little infringement of the law, just this one little yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like, no, 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 no. You were standing in the fucking press conferences, mm-hmm. right? Telling us that, like, we had to see nobody. You stayed inside your house. Doesn't matter if you're, like, fucking dying of loneliness. If you're, like, like I don't know, having depression. Yeah. If you're some, like, little old lady who's not seen her fucking mm. family for a month. Like, people weren't able to go to their fucking, like, funerals of parents. See, the last moments with people. Like yeah. all of these like awful things that accompanied the lockdowns, right? Which people like were just like, do you know what? If that's if that's what we gotta do, we'll fucking do it, right? Mm-hmm. And they did, like And all the while, while they were fucking telling us to do this, they were boozing up in the fucking yeah. back room. Yeah. And not just a little bit, like till all hours of the morning. Yeah. Like the they fucking were puking. Li- Yeah. <laughs> and and how the, I have no idea why there is not people being like you fucks like you yeah. absolute like du- duplicitous lying cunts yeah like <laughs> where is the anger <laughs> yeah and i like um i get really sick of hearing we all just want to move on from party games no, so i, I, I never want to move on if if this tory government can still push a letter that was a joke letter from um the you know from labor in the handover to uh, the Tories in 2010, if they can still push a letter that says, I'm sorry, there isn't any money, which was a joke. If they can still do that, you bet I'm hanging on to Partygate for the rest of my fucking life. <laughs> I'll t- if I ever have kids, I'll tell them about Partygate as soon as they can listen. Like, let me tell you what these pricks did. And it, it, uh, tell, I, like, I'm, a, um, I'm, not, I'm not a big monarchist. I don't hate them as people particularly, but uh, as a concept, I think monarchy is ridiculous. You, oh, I practically was buying print Queen Elizabeth memorial plates when I uh, saw her sitting alone and they were out partying. On the night of Prince Philip's funeral, the, on the Queen had sat alone, they partied. And it, yeah, obviously, like, well, why is that, why is that more important? But also, mum, throw them in the tower. <laughs> it's it's disgusting. Mm, yeah, the whole thing is the whole thing is ridiculous and such a sort of it's disgusting and beautiful the way it really sums up this entire government. Got Johnson raising a glass in tons of different pictures at different events uh, while people were literally waving to loved ones through windows and 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 not able to sit at bedsides as people died. Like people should never stop sharing those stories. And we couldn't see my dad and he died alone. They should never stop sharing those stories. Like where 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 are the protests? Seriously, they're, I mean they they exist, but they're 
they're trying to ban those now, aren't they? Wow. They, they, um, I, I, what I don't know is why we aren't absolutely rioting in the street. And I think it's like last days of Saigon. This, this could like blow any day now. I mean, do you really see that happening or do you think they'll stumble on? Like, do you, just, oh, just I see, like, yeah, so, I see what you mean. Yeah, do, yeah. Do, um, do, do, oh, well, do, it's, do I mean, at the them? moment, they're, they're really limping on. I think that hubris will only take them so far because uh, they've, they've got everywhere by being winners. It's like how Trump was seen as a winner. And mm. as soon as Trump was seen as a loser, lost that election and lost, those, lost the House and the Senate and lost the election all in one fell swoop. Um, I, it, was, it was like suddenly people went, oh, a bit embarrassed by him now. Obviously, got diehard followers. I think the same things happened with Johnson. He was seen as a winner. He won a mayoral election. He uh, won this huge majority yeah. in the yeah, Commons. On the campaign, Brexit campaign. Yeah, like um, I had, I was campaigning in 2019, and I had remain people on the doorstep saying, "I'm just so sick of Brexit, and I just want it done now." And so, get Brexit done really worked. Mm. Like, that really works. People don't want, didn't, there were, I, I obviously was like, yeah, I'll take a, another vote. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, please. Get the deal. Show us what the deal is and I'll vote on it. Lovely stuff. <laughs> I hate it too, but lovely stuff. I'll vote on that. But there, yeah, there were people who was just like, I can't listen to it anymore. It's been, it's been four years. It had been over four years at that point. And, but just, so Johnson won that election and was a huge winner. Yeah. And he winning all the way along. And it's very easy to back a winner. Mm. And as soon as he's a loser, as soon as he's slipping back in polls, as soon as he, that, I mean, those council elections were an absolute disaster. But Labour didn't, didn't do great. It, it wasn't brilliant, no. It ought to have been better. Yeah. But I liked seeing big green and Lib Dem gains because mm. ultimately that's very bad for the talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I, I, this, not an original thought, but um, I really like the idea of a progressive alliance for one election. They do that. They put um, uh, PR on the table, put a proportional representation on the table, and yeah, say, oh, "It's so annoying, isn't it?" <laughs> it's like ninety percent of our members. Want yeah, it and yeah. It's not going to do it. It's such a huge mistake. But I like. There's me living in my little utopia. But I'm going. Oh. And then there's no chance of ever getting a conservative government like this again. Mm-hmm. If the conservatives ever wanted to get in again, they'd have to. Um, move way away from where they are now, yeah, which is where they've away. been incrementally moving for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Like in America, replace <laughs> Thatcher with Reagan. It's the same yeah. thing there. Yeah. It? I mean, we've been pretty much seeing like the same sort of shit going down. Cause like, yeah. And like, yeah, I've, I've had innumerable people on, on uh, so like talking right. about this, like mm. the, the more serious side of things. Like, do you- Sorry, this was maybe funny, wasn't it? And yeah. No, going, no, 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 it's, it's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, we'll get to, we'll get back to the comedy. Actually, like <laughs> the, do you think that the style of politics that America uses will fly here? Because I see it kind mm. of being consistently rejected. Um, in in a sense, it's like the there like there's a kind of culture worry thing that sort of works here, but generally, I find that the British people are just a bit like, uh, all right, whatever. Do you know, like, we're yeah. not like passionate enough in either direction. It, it's a funny one, isn't it? Yeah, because the, like, we're known as Turf Island. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, currently the um, <laughs> Turf and Plague Island, currently, like, the king of the culture wars, the king, you know, the, the, the crown on the top mm. of the culture wars is the trans debate. Yeah. Which is insane. There should baffle, be a debate. It's a baffling thing to enter. Yeah, of, of it's like less than one percent of the population. Yeah, like and, and, I think yeah. there's like studies. It's like one point mm, two. So like yeah. Obviously, these are just like big numbers. Mm. Like I don't think you actually helped, but like it's yeah. such a tiny portion of the yeah. population that it actually affects. Yeah, uh, and it yeah it has been turned into. It's you know they've recycled the gay panic in the eighties, mm. uh, which I don't know what that was. 40 years before that, but it's every 40 years. It was probably, well, it was in the 60s. It would mm. be um, immigrants from uh, sort of Central Asia. Mm. That's, I suppose they would have been spoken about in the same way. We, we know they were. We got Oswald Mosley. I go back and then it, before that it was the Jews and 
this I mean it's an old Stuart Lee bit isn't it where he's like going back to like why are the bloody beaker folk yeah. what's wrong with drinking out of your hands like a cup <laughs> coming over here with their beakers bloody beaker folk so um there where was I going with that yeah I think uh the the fact that trans people are currently the head of that debate it's something that the government here are dipping their toe in with yeah, yeah Johnson has piped up about that a few but times. But again, I think the British people are just like, eh. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Because the only the only arena in which I think there's actually a discussion to be mm. had on that is um, trans women and women's sports. That's the only one that I can see, like, a, there should be, like, a discussion of. Just because, like... But, like, there has been. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, I think... But then... It's not the government's place to legislate on that. No. It's whatever the the, bo- the sporting yeah. body is for whatever sport it's. So it's mm. like whatever it's like uh, if you're talking like fucking MMA and boxing, or if you're talking like football mm. or like Olympics. Like that's not the government isn't no. aren't the ones to make those decisions. It's really strange, isn't it? It would almost be like um, the government weighing in on prize money at Wimbledon. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, exactly. We, the government, believe the prize money at Wimbledon should be higher, and uh, you like. Why are you Wimbledon talking about this? Wimbledon would be like, this? okay, great to yeah, know. Like, yeah, <laughs> thanks, Boris. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a it's a really strange thing that they're. I it is really strange that they're dipping their toe in with that. The you know the the panic alarm bit of me goes. Well, they must know something, but actually they blunder around like Cummings, Dominic Comrade Cummings. Uh, Dominic Cummings, a, a terrible human being that oh, apparently we ally of the left. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dom. Um, Oh, there was a really funny bit in his hearing, which was a year ago, uh, where he went, <laughs> this was really funny. He said, the 2019 election, the British public had a choice between Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn, a choice they never should have had to make. <laughs> and, uh, the, the, oh man, FBP Twitter were like, hey man, I don't like the guy, but he's got a point. And then like a minute later, someone went to him. Uh, so I can't remember who it was, but someone asked him, in, in what way do you mean? He went, well, Boris Johnson's incompetent and Jeremy Corbyn would have stopped Brexit. And then then you saw FBP Twitter going like, ah, God, now I have to decide why I hate more Brexit or Corbyn. It was pretty great. But you know, like, um, Cummings has I gone... I don't think Corbyn would have stopped Brexit. I don't, I don't he's, know it's he's about stopping. It. He's definitely a secret Eurosceptic. Not even a secret Eurosceptic. I'm a Eurosceptic. He's definitely a Eurosceptic. I, I mean, who's who's... Like, where did this thing come from where the EU is a panacea for all of our issues of problems? Like, obviously, I was pro Remain um, and have never wavered on that. But where's this thing come from that the EU is this perfect symbol of peace and justice? Like, no, aren't we better in than out? I think that was, I think if people had run more on, we're much better in than out. Rather that than, was, the, that was it. It was better off in. That was the campaign. Yeah. And it was the most uninspiring thing I've ever seen. But I think if they'd pushed more of, no, here's why we're better off in, rather than, mm. we owe the EU mm. our beating hearts. I don't think it worked. People, <laughs> people were turned off by that. But anyway, I think uh, every 40 years in politics, there's a cataclysmic shift. And unfortunately, Brexit seems to have been part of that. But I don't think we're eventually going to head towards fascism because it's not sustainable. Boop, 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 boop. No. no, I mean, like, like I said, I think it's just apathy. British just, people are just like, eh, uh, okay. I think on the whole, it's it really... really something to get us riled up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we really like that Olympics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, like, I don't know, there's nothing like a four day weekend to make you feel patriotic. We like a bit of, like, yeah. <laughs> they love that even, queen. Even, even all the like anti royalists are out there being like, yeah. four day weekend. Like, I, fuck yeah, yeah, long live the queen. Oh, like, oh <laughs> bloody how the sun's out. I'm going to get red as a lobster in that bloody sun for four days. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> there was that, there was that, uh, Cummings has got that nickname for Johnson, it was in the shopping trolley. And he always just posts on Twitter like an emoji of his shopping trolley because he said Johnson just is like a freewheeling shopping trolley careening off things. That's his style of leadership. And I think it's really funny, even though I think Cummings is terrible. And I don't think we should trust everything he says unless it comes with receipts. <laughs> yeah. No, I would, I would agree. I mean, it's difficult to tell the man's motivations, really. <laughs> yeah. But, like, but he loves chaos, doesn't he? He, he loves does. to fuck shit up. So yeah. he's, at the moment, he's loving this. I mean, honestly... I'm kind of with him. Like, oh, yeah. We need, we need a bit of fucking like it. Like, and the, this Stir is the thing up. that weirds me out, right? It's like he went in and was just like, we need to reform the civil service. And everyone mm. who believes that we should reform the civil yeah. service because it's like a fucking like dinosaur of an institution well, that's yeah. filled with like legacy people. Yeah. It's like, 
everyone that like should agree with that was just like, oh no, you can't have them going in and doing the thing that we want to do. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's like when it, yeah, it's the same in the same way that um, the you get the right going freedom of speech, and then they like someone boos the national anthem at that Liverpool game. No, not like that. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's that, that fuck it, that pisses me off more than anything. It's, yeah. like, you, it's like, look, I, you know, I don't think they should boo the anthem just because like, what is that doing? Yeah. But go for it. Yeah. You also, know, who cares? Oh my God. I watched, uh, I love international football and during the Euros, I had a real treat because the Copa America was on mm. and the final was Brazil, Argentina. And if people think that our fans <laughs> are like, oh, they're rabid, they're rabid, they're booing the anthem, they're shouting and screaming. Like you always see the Argentine Brazilian fans. It was the funniest thing. Anytime like the Brazilians had the ball, all the Argentinian fans were going, Boo! Then the Argentine will get the ball. Boo! From the other side. And like Neymar uh, got a bad tackle and his uh, shorts got ripped and he ran up to the referee and was like, look at my shorts. It was the most, it was honestly, I was doubled over laughing because also I, I really didn't care who won. I was just watching the crazy football. And, and like the crowd were insane. I thought, well, you know what? You feel people should watch this because this is funny. <laughs> yeah. And like, like people, people used to like talk about fucking Gaza, right? Mm. As, as this like disgrace. It was, oh, yeah. he's a bit drunk. And it's like, Jesus Christ, like the, the hero of Argentinian football, like fucking like <laughs> doing lines in the fucking crowd and start, starting fights <laughs> with Nigerians in the stands. It's like, and, and he's their hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, did you see the Maradona documentary that As If Capadia made? No. It's, um, broke my heart I saw I because I had no feelings on Maradona other than well he was that brilliant footballer who did loads of drink and drugs um and he I don't think he died when the, I saw the documentary and like at the end of it I was like this poor man I cried <laughs> I thought well, they used him up and spat him out <laughs> it's really quite sad yeah. I mean that's what happens to sports stars though. yeah because like your career is so short yeah it's like you just give everything you've mm. got for mm-hmm. 10 years and then you're yeah. just like Bleh. Yeah, spend. and you can either go into commentary or you can go into coaching. Mm-hmm. And if you can't do either of those things, you can be broke having been a millionaire. Yeah. It's quite scary, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's Look, crazy how fast that'll happen. There's some bad, you know, I'm not saying like Gaza made great choices. Uh, I, I, I don't think football. brilliant, like one of the greatest footballers of all time um, I would uh, not like to be married to him. <laughs> bloody hell but uh yeah there doesn't seem to be this support at the, i think maybe it's better now this support mm. at the beginning of career yeah not- hopefully it's better now listen there's something they were talking about james brown right oh yeah and they i'm gonna to have to go and watch the biopic on him because because like, oh. apparently he like he got in a fight got into like a chase with the police he was like ramming police cars like <laughs> he was cro- he was like going he was it was across like georgia and south carolina so he crossed the state border there was like a full chase went on. I was like, james brown they're like get on up guy like the dances like like seriously i was like how did i not know this like and it, right. he, probably, he probably didn't even go to jail because like, it was the 70s even... they were probably just like oh i just did a few drugs it's fine like, <laughs> this 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 rich guy doesn't need to go to jail <laughs> Yeah, don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm gonna have to switch laptops in oh, a few minutes. Okay, um, because is it filling up? This one is no, it's not filling up. Mm. It's dying. <laughs> oh, because yeah, because I, I haven't got. The fucking camera. I see. I see. Oh, I don't know how I managed to do that because I packed all my stuff. It was like, this, this, this stuff. right. Anyway, oh. it'll be fine. I'm not, it'll take two minutes to switch okay, over, right. but yeah, we've got a couple minutes left okay. on this one, and then, um, but we're already yeah, 45 minutes in, so we oh, don't have too, too much longer to do. Ooh. You don't have to suffer my conversation <laughs> very much. Um, I, so, I, get, I, get, I go into a fugue state when I do a podcast, so who knows what terrible things I'll say next. <laughs> so, like, do, there's been like a, a lot of controversy around comedians recently. Like, mm. There was fucking. Dave Chappelle, there mm-hmm. was, uh, there's Ricky Gervais now, there was uh, Jimmy Carr. Yeah. Do you steer clear of like certain topics or do you just think everything is fair game? Uh, they, I have never had to, I've never had to censor anything I've said. Um, and I have been ac- accused of playing it safe by people who've never seen my comedy. Um, 
and and it's quite weird getting told the left uh they only say stuff that people agree with and then everyone claps i'm like God, i i do material about Hitler. those comedians definitely exist but no one goes to yeah, see them like i i like <laughs> I, I struggle to name one that's famous yeah you know? yeah, uh, yeah no yeah. one goes to see them no exactly <laughs> yeah yeah how boring um they call it it's oh it's bloody clapter it's clapter um you're not laughing they're just clapping uh like i do material about like hitler's terrible bowel problems and um I've done material about how I'm similar to Hitler because he he used to watch footage of cities burning in his in his home cinema. That's what he had real to real footage of cities burning, and he would watch that to relax. And I I found that out and went, oh, that's awful, and then realised like I watched so, I watched so many documentaries about war and nine eleven, and <laughs> and so I had material. About it. I was like that, so I'm a bit like Hitler. So is I don't know is that safe? Is that is that safe. really safe stuff? Do you, and do you know what? No one's no one has ever gone. Oh, how awful mm. that you said that. Um, so this idea that uh, there, oh, there's certain. I don't believe there are certain topics you just can't cover. I just wonder why some comics cover those topics and why they cover them in the way that they do. Mm. I mean, first off, like, where do you see how I make this go viral? Like, Suze Kemper in there says she's like Hitler. Like, <laughs> I'm a bit like Hitler. <laughs> yeah. I'll just clip that. <laughs> Ringtone. <laughs> but that's the title. Like no. Obviously, me and Hitler were not watching these this footage for the same reason. Is no. is the is the joke there? Yeah. Well, that's not funny at all. Well, right wing com guys, I'm sorry you're offended. Looks like you were just looking for things to be offended by. Almost like they're accusing people of the same thing that they're guilty of. Mm, yeah. yeah. That does that does crack me up because there are certain people who, on left and right, who mm. are like, oh, they're so easily offended. They're so mm -hmm. easily offended. And they're the ones that are easily offended. You go down the Daily Mail comments <laughs> and it's just offense. It's endless offense. I hate these people. I'm disgusted by this. The... Uh, the, they contribute nothing to society. Doesn't matter what the article is. You go, well, you're all just offended, and you've got names like Brexit Mike. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've never got this. And I think this is also like a, a thing of Twitter and the internet is like we see like the most extreme people parody because there's mm. just like like the like the Dave Chappelle thing. There was mm -hmm. what like fifty people at that fucking protest, and mm -hmm. the internet blows up like it was mm -hmm. twenty thousand people. Yeah, and that like the entirety of the left hate Dave Chappelle so much mm -hmm. that they never want to see him work again. It's like don't like the joke. Fair yeah, enough, man. Like, like mate, I just <laughs> thought it was really shit. Is that all right? Yeah, I mean, no, it's not all right because you're offended. I am actually a bit offended by transphobia, but I'm also I'm more, I'm offended by the laziness. Like there's a lot that that's a brilliant comedian, yeah. and why is he doing that? I think the joke wasn't. Again, this is the problem with like because people talk about a joke without hearing what the thing was. Because like as far as I was aware, it's like a big long story about a friend of his who's um, a trans woman, and like he's like talking about things, that, and she's clearly friends with him, like. I don't think that shows that he's transphobic. Like, do you not? Know, like, I mean, there's a lot of other things that show he is. But. <laughs> But I mean, if she's fine with him. Yeah, okay. She, I mean, she, you know what happened to her? Killed herself. Yeah, well, and yeah, it was blamed on trans activists. And blamed on trans activists? It was blamed on trans activists because really? uh, they apparently drove her to it. And none of that, no, there's no evidence to suggest that. Mm. Absolutely, like, absolutely none. And Dave Chappelle went on stage and went, it's mm. the trans activist. I'm Team Turk. You said that? Yeah. Check this out. It's in his new special. The yeah. new one. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, yeah, I mean, it doesn't justify someone going up and trying to fucking stab him. It's just like, don't... No, do yeah. that guy was... I mean, that guy sounds like uh, that he's having quite the episode. Yeah. Apparently, he tried to kill his roommate. <gasps> yeah, yeah. People are... But and literally tried to stab his roommate because I don't think he got the weapon out. He didn't manage to get the weapon out when he attacked Chappelle. Yes. Horrendous. Do you think the internet's making people crazier? The internet? No, I don't. No, I think that uh, on, there are... I thought we got a swap. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> um, anyway, where were we? Huh. Something, um, something, something. Oh, it was about people... Um, is the internet making people crazy? Yes, is the internet making people crazier? I actually... Right, okay, yeah. I actually don't think it is. I don't think that's the case. I can see why people are saying that. I think what there is, is everyone's behaving as they 
normally would. My my mindset hasn't changed from being terminally online, as someone said I was. Um, what has changed, though, is that there's a tiny amount of people showing up and being crazy on the internet. And uh, the, by, the, by the word crazy, what I mean is they're showing up and stirring the pot with the loudest possible voice. Normally... Uh, normally, 20 years ago, they'd have been some guy in a pub going, well, I think these vaccines are going to cause all kinds of trouble. Uh, and there'd be someone else going, how dare you, those vaccines are the greatest thing that have ever been put in an arm. <laughs> um, you, you, you can give them any accent. <laughs> <laughs> they all exist on Twitter. Um, so you get them on Twitter, and then suddenly everyone's going, no, I disagree with you, no, I disagree with you. I don't I like this argument where it's like, oh, no one will accept nuance. They always think their idea is the right idea. It's like, I don't think that has ever been any different in history. That's, a, you know, when I used to work in a pub in the very early 2000s when there wasn't social media, there was mm -hmm. Friends Reunited, and I don't think, don't think much was going on there. Um, which you had to pay to join in those days. That's weird, isn't it? But mm. uh, back then, when I used to be, I'd be behind the bar, and if a talk was happening, everyone was just agreeing with each other. Because why would you, why were they going, it's like just a load of guys who like real ale. Why are they going to go and find a load of guys who don't like real ale and go, right, we must all join together and have this conversation properly? Um, it was, it's just now you've got the, the loud voices with the, very, um, the, what, what I guess would be the extreme opinion, like the anti-vaxxers, mm. the anti-BLM, mm. they will show up in reasonable chat yeah, yeah. and go, you're all scum, you're disgusting. And then that causes loads of people to argue with them. Mm. And they're not even arguing unreasonably a lot of the time. Although you do then get people yeah. go, I've seen your profile picture, mate. You look like a thumb. Uh, well, how's that helping anyone? Because I get called ugly all the time on Twitter by... Um, people I probably wouldn't want to sleep with, but their looks are irrelevant. And so are mine to what we were arguing with. Cause I wasn't saying, why aren't I a supermodel? So that would be the only reason for someone to pipe up with, cause your face isn't symmetrical and it's weird and you're too short. And <laughs> so they, I don't care that some anti-vaxxers doesn't want to have sex with me. It has nothing to do with, and with vaccines. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. At, the, at the same time, like you, you you're right. Like generally, people tend to like yeah, hang out with people who have relatively similar opinions. On yeah. Them. But even then, I've I have never ever seen and like I, for example, right? I was at I had people at my my flat where the flat one. Mm. And there's a guy who was like super duper pro Brexit, um, right? Fucking patriot, mm. mom the jubilee, etc. Yeah. Um, and we were he was chatting to me and a couple of friends of mine from Northern Ireland who were fucking like fuck the Brits yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. like Fair enough. give us a united Ireland we are objectively awful <laughs> well yeah, everyone I'm fucking, English the everyone worst everyone is do you know what I mean everyone's terrible yeah. I do think this I think everyone's a prick <laughs> yeah like the, I mean there's just pricks in every nation mm. like the, the thing that I, that I learned from working in, in the bar that I had in, in Austria was that like Everyone is a cunt at times. <laughs> All nations have, have fucking bastards and like whingy people and people who are just fucking solid gold legends. Like yeah. there is, I, I haven't found like one particular nation, obviously apart from the Irish, because everyone loves us. Yeah. Um, that oh, is <laughs> wonderful stuff. <laughs> yeah. But apart, like really, there's just cunts everywhere. And like, yeah. you know, it's like there's cunts on the left, there's cunts on the right. Yeah, There's absolutely. cunts in the middle. Like everyone's dick most of the time. Yeah. There's people who I agree with on everything politically who've shown up in my mentions. I'm like, oh, annoying. <laughs> it's not a case of like, you have to agree with me for me to like you. I'm friends with plenty of people who are in the centre who don't think I'm an extremist lunatic. Like, <laughs> Well, they must be secret lefties. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So don't worry, I'm going to turn them because everyone has to agree with me. It, oh. Yeah, it's amazing. I think what... what being online, it, it, this is, you know, well, well trodden commentary, but the fact that it gives people a, um, a barrier, which means they will say stuff they would never say to someone's face. I don't do that online. I'm pretty much the same as I am in person. I think just people will read your tone in text mm. however they want. Yeah. So people, either people go, oh, Suze Kenton is incredibly aggressive. And uh, people who know me in real life, 
find that quite you're funny. You're tweeting in cuts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I'm not, and, and that no one knows what, and, and people will go, oh, I thought you would be really scary until I saw your stand up, but you're pretty light. <laughs> but that's it. The text removes like, what, 70% of the communication. Mm, yeah, which is. Yeah, text messages are fucking difficult sometimes. Like you're sitting, yeah, there, especially intergenerational ones. Because I, <laughs> I read a whole fucking book about like use of language and stuff in the ah, internet okay. and on text messages, and they pointed out some really interesting things. Like, fuck, what's the name of the book? Uh, because internet. Oh, that's a good title. Yeah, by Gretchen McCullough, mm-hmm. um, and it was talking about like there was like a whole fucking like subsection of a chapter about the exclamation mark. Ah. And how, how our generation uses it more as like a woo sort of like yeah yeah yeah, yeah sort of fun yeah. thing. It's just like yeah, we're gonna go there later, or like see you later, like or yeah, can yeah. you do that now? Like exclamation mark. And if it like older generations see it, they're like, oh my god, they're furious. <laughs> <laughs> Having a great time, angry. Like, <laughs> so do you think then if text is the problem, the mm. next the next evolution of Twitter? is just only video. Although I guess oh, Clubhouse kind of tried that. Oh, Clubhouse was all audio, wasn't it? Yeah. It died didn't a it. death, didn't it? Is anyone still using Clubhouse? I heard someone talk about it recently. I yeah, I don't, right. I don't think I've heard it mentioned in, certainly not this year. Mm. But uh, I, I don't That's know. because Twitter I, stole it with the Twitter spaces. Well, thing. yeah, yeah. They just yeah. took the idea. It's like, to be fair, it's what all the big tech companies start yeah. doing. It's like TikTok has their little videos. So then Instagram have reels and then YouTube yeah. has shorts. And That's it. Yeah, um, I yeah I I always think like yeah I think I I think I'm on the cutting edge until I see TikTok I'm like I can't do this as well I do Twitter <laughs> I can't do all these things um, yeah I I don't know I, I in lockdown a lot of comedians got involved with Twitch mm. and I started going on Twitch and you can live stream for two hours at night five four five six days a week and I found, I was so fun but there was no one else on the video. It's just me and then a load of people in the chat box. So you'd have 60, 80 mm. people all talking to you. And that really worked. The atmosphere was always nice. If someone, sometimes you get troll come in and say, like, someone came in and went, how old are you, grandma? I was like, oh, come on. I, uh, uh, like, come uh, on, teenage pregnancy. Playing age, <laughs> late 20s. <laughs> But, but pe- sometimes you get people come in and someone would come in and be anti-Semitic and I'd go, oh, and then deal with them, the mods, and everyone would just go, oh, don't think so. And they'd get blocked. And within two minutes, it's just done mm. and then moved on. So that was different to Twitter, how something can drag on for days and mm. days. Um, but they gave you a turn off replies function. It's wonderful. People start arguing my replies. Often I go, right, I'm turning off the replies like a mum hiding the nez. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so I, I think... Um, I don't know if it will be a case of like everyone just posting videos. I think it would get a bit loud. But then in 20 years, that's what it will be. And I'll be that person in their late 50s going, oh, it's a bit loud. <laughs> oh, God, turn it down. Yeah. Turn oh, no, but down. then we'll all have our ear pods wired in. <laughs> yeah. You know, they'll be, they'll be just like, getting, or no, and even better, it'll be a thing that you attach to the back of your skull and it projects the sound directly into your brain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and yeah, you can have um, Netflix on the inside of your eyelid and mm. just do that and watch netflix google have these fucking glasses that are lit they start they're starting oh, to look, are they still just doing really, them no 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 no, no. They, this, is the they, new just, one. this is the new one because right. i know they tried it like google glass. years ago and it didn't really catch on no. but now I, i'd say the technology is probably better now. but like and also i think like how vr didn't work in the yeah, 90s and it does now but they're starting to like i think they'll be it'll be like actually uh, ar like sort of um what's it augmented reality oh where you're yeah gonna be able to like walk down the street and people are starting to talk about selling like ad space on buildings and in things, but in the like augmented reality yeah. me- version of the metaverse. So you'd like walk down the street with like the glasses on and then you'll be able to see things projected on the, sh- on the sides of buildings that are going to exist. But like, holy It's shit. very 80s sci-fi, so it's quite Robocop. Mm. And the, the reality of it will be just so like benign and tedious. Yeah. Uh, it'll just be like, oh yeah, it's just advertising again. Mm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's just, oh is that, we know what advertising is. It's now it's being advertised in this way. Yeah. Um, and it probably won't be the end of humanity. That, it, it, that will just be climate change. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I mean, the, the, 
yeah, the temperatures are concerning. I'm not yeah. as I'm not as worried about the sea levels because like that doesn't seem to be changing that much. Right. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, just like based on what they estimated versus mm. what we've got, it's like right, okay. So maybe there's something that means like the sea levels won't particularly rise, but like obviously we're still gonna have to deal with all of the other effects. Yes. Like it's not, not like it's like it's because people always talk about things like they're like they're dism- it's like even if people are like well you know we can't think about you know we can't plot what the warming is going to be like and like mm. you're not factoring in the sun or they have lots of arguments about like really specific bits right and the thing that i'm always just like be like have you seen the pollution oh that's the one that always gets me it's like like go to like the tar fields in like fucking northern canada and see the destruction oh, like really? the other like just like is that the kind of world you want to leave yeah you know, that's the part that always gets me it's just like look you see even if you don't think the warming is going to be a problem right mm. the pollution man and the same with yeah. cars and, and stuff in in like cities like can you imagine how much fucking cleaner the air would be if mm. it was all like electric or hydrogen fuel yeah. cells or any of those things yeah which is such a better world and there's all proof out there that that isn't isn't there there's some someone theorized and apparently it all worked out and i'm just gonna sound like an idiot going hey man i heard this thing but apparently if you cover an area about the size of tunisia in um solar panels and like i'm probably talking I've probably got this completely wrong, but I do know that they said, <laughs> and it and it was genuinely thought of as like, yeah, if you coat an area of Tunisia in solar panels, you could fuel the world mm. with uh, the sunlight that would be created, I, I, and I, they I, I, and I mean, there was space for it, and but there's no money in that, mm. and ultimately, unfortunately, it all comes down to fuel companies, mm. the big fuel companies, and um, they have got richer during the pandemic. And we've all got poorer. Yeah. So I spoke to some ele- electricians about this. I was just like, because mm-hmm. I was, I was just like spitball, and I was like, so Boris wants to build back better. He wants to give money back to people. He wants to like be the the, the green new deal to kind mm. of steal that thunder from the the from Labour. Yeah. Like, Why doesn't he just give everyone solar panels? Right. And I spoke to yeah, if you're that keen, mate. But I spoke to some electricians about this, Mm. and they were like, "Yeah, we need to upgrade the grid first. The grid is so close to being like way beyond capacity." Gotcha. Fucking light bulbs, like so they don't give a fuck about so because that would be they would they would sit down. You see, if you actually cared about this, you'd sit down. Okay, so right, how do we get to this point of like a sustainable level of energy independence? It's like you know, okay, so maybe you're still going to need like some gas and Mm. power plants and stuff like that to like level things out because like yeah it's it's a case of like source and demand and supply and all of all mm-hmm. of this like balancing like and make sure you have enough power and everything so you need that you need batteries but then you probably need maybe some nuclear stuff but like mostly it's about like allocating the energy so the grid has to be fucking good enough to be able to do it mm. and i was like so why why is no one talking about that like, why and it's yeah they don't give a fuck they don't actually care yeah yeah depressingly it's a shame well yeah we're, we're, we're due a, a revolution and <laughs> i think it's coming any day now oh. <laughs> Come on, Josh. but then i'm also revolution. i'm scared about a revolution right because you know what happens when revolutions happen the crazy people end up in charge right? <laughs> we that, think it's happened oh no yeah, no but the I mean, revolution happened I mean, but like right you tear down all the institutions and, and get cromwell you, yeah you, you, yeah exactly you, you you go start with all these noble ambitions like um, sure. like in Russia, and then 20 years later, you're fucking murdering 20, 30, 40 million people. Yeah. Or you get, you know, yeah, yeah, like you said, fucking Cromwell. Yeah. You know, I'd like a really sort of peaceful... Nice revolution. Yeah, nice revolution. <laughs> that would be ideal. Just like, come on, renew a bit of trust in some of our institutions. I, you know who I reckon? I reckon it'd be good. <laughs> Gary Lineker. <laughs> I think some of the football guys from, uh, from uh, Euro 96... Uh, Gary and Neville. Gary Neville yeah, and Gary Jim Neville's Carter great. Yeah, <laughs> just, just good boys, you know. I think they do a good job. <laughs> Alan Shearer he seems all right. Alan Shearer probably. Yeah, head screen David Seaman. David Seaman. He's literally safe. Hands. Just, just like good common sense blokes. Yeah, and isn't that what the right always want. They, they want, want the good common sense. common sense. They'd love it. It's all white men. That's their favourite. <laughs> That's racist. I just, I just said that Isn't was it, racist. Just racist. Yeah. Well, that that's you written off as a racist. Racist. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think we're yeah we're getting getting close to time because I got pack up and everything. So yeah. gigs coming up, things that people can check out. Uh, yeah, my um, stand up show this year is called PlayStation. It's about how I got a Sony PlayStation in the late nineties and felt like a grown up. You know, I was thirteen. And uh, it's been 25 years and I still don't think I'm a grown up. So it's a show about being a teenager in the 90s. It's for anyone who remembers that era or remembers being a teenager. So you check that out. It's on my website, all the gigs, suzekempner.co.uk. Check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash suzuk. You can come along and tell me how ugly and stuff. <laughs> see, you got permission there. Anyone that goes to see her, scream it, put it on cards, <laughs> signs. It's like, I wouldn't fuck you. Like, yeah, oh. and I, I, I didn't want to anyway, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> you could, you could, well, if they were going to start with that, you could just get like a little one that just says no thanks. Yeah, like, it's, a, it's a no thanks for me. Yeah. It's a no for me. <laughs> <laughs> Simon Kyle's picture. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the podcast. If you want to leave us a comment, that would be awesome. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple, please leave us a review. Until next time, thanks for listening.